Hi, and welcome to The Green Elephant, the show that takes sustainability, climate change, social and environmental issues and eats them, one fact at a time. We're all about inspiring sustainable habits. So sit back, relax, have fun and learn together with your hosts, Russell and Mike. Uh, This episode is brought to you by the fact that if the internet was a country, it would rank sixth for energy usage. And by the fact that the emissions generated by watching 30 minutes of Netflix is the same as driving almost four miles. Today's show is entitled, Can a Website Ever Be Green? So, we've got a few websites and run a number over the years, and we have used all sorts of hosts and technologies, such as AWS from Here Amazon, we go. Azure <laughs> from Microsoft, Google, um, and lots of other technologies such as things you might have heard of like PHP, MySQL, WordPress, Drupal, ASP, .NET, CSS, and <laughs> yeah. who remembers? Oh. Server side includes. Wow, uh, I, a, I don't. <laughs> I think that was about. Um, <laughs> oh, um, is that is that as technical as we're going to get? Because I, I, my head just popped a little bit. Nineteen nineties, nineteen ninety. I repeat. I repeat my comment. That. I repeat my comment from other episodes where I say, you so old. (laughs) Yeah, indeed. Well, I think, you know, it's going to be difficult to pick the green bones out of all of that lot, but um, let's give it a try. Um, So I I, I must admit, before before we dive into any any more of the stats, it's been quite a, it's, I don't suppose it really come across my radar as to how, uh, how this growing monster of the internet, which started off with a, a bunch of universities, you know, <laughs> put, bunging up a few pages, has now become this huge energy-eating monster, which mm. which uh, which is well, it's, it's in every part of our lives, isn't it? It's in our it pockets is, nowadays. It is. And and I think the you know we know that the wider internet is a huge user of energy and emitter of co2 but i think an awful lot of that is really hidden because there's so much stuff that goes on that's just invisible to users every day of the internet they see their website they see a bit of facebook and they're not aware that you know there are billions of transactions and interactions that go on they don't know about um, uh, and um, and I, I, I probably is it, it is so hidden. What what is it? You know what what's eating energy? Because I got my mobile phone and I got my laptop, and of course I know they are consuming energy. But I've got a nice energy efficient laptop, and my my phone is just battery. I mean, it doesn't take long to charge now. And so, what what's eating the power? Well, I think the easiest way to think about it is you know, the internet is made up of physical things. And the two most important of those physical things really are data centers. And that's where all the kit and computers and devices sit. And then the networks, or the bits of string and wire that connect them together. Um, So you've got those two things, data centers, big warehouses of computers, and networks, cables and wires, joining them all together. Um, And that really, very simplistically, makes up the internet. And um, both of those things use a huge amount of power. Yeah, Um, well, I I suppose, you know, we've had the privilege of spending many years working in in data centers and running networks of mm -hmm. of, uh, some size but yeah. to the uninitiated that might all be a bit of a mystery you know so we you got this amorphous blob of kit that sits somewhere um yep. amazon microsoft or some of the bigger ones google and they and then people plot their websites their images their blogs their rantings onto <laughs> onto Mostly, some yeah. some tool or another um yep. 
uh, and and uh, and then that that obviously has to be stored. Um, when yeah. somebody calls upon it, it has to be served up to them, um, and and obviously that doesn't happen by magic. It has to use electricity to transmit yeah. from, yeah. you know, because you could be looking at a website that's on the other side of the world, and yeah. all of a sudden it's on your mobile phone. So I mean, what what listeners have to imagine is that there's a huge warehouse but instead of storing loads of products or boxes instead it stores loads and loads of computers thousands of them and they're all connected with wires and lots of flashing lights and each one of those computers might have one two ten fifty websites sitting on those computers um, and it's the job of those computers to make sure the website is available to people when they need it. But if you imagine a room filled with a few thousand computers, that needs a lot of things to run it, all of which take energy and power. Yeah. So those computers all generate a lot of heat. There's loads yeah, of heat think... coming out the back of those and they need to be cooled down. And that I mean, if cooling... people think if people have got a laptop even if they've you know used their phone for some time they can feel the warmth in the phone mm. or or you or you know your fan kicks on on your laptop or your pc yep. Yep. that duplicate that, that by that ten thousand in a room yeah it's, it's, yeah uh, and some um, of these so, rooms can can be yeah. you know i i've no i've i've had a data center which i ran where the air conditioning went off and as you step into a, a 60 degree room, um, yeah. but you then warm. realize uh, you're getting that down to human comfortable, 21, even 25 degrees, which would be a bit sweaty. Um, that's, that's, that takes a lot of gumption. I think uh, yeah. one of the stats that, that you pulled out was that 40, 43% of, of what uh, emits CO2 is, is that to, to power it. And then, ironically enough to cool it down so it's, yeah. it's rather so, ridiculous yeah. situation that we're 43 percent of the the power is used to to cool the thing down and then you've got uh, another 43 percent of the power actually powering all the computers and the devices that connect the computers um and then you've got storage because all of these devices need to store information somewhere and so you have very specialist computers if you like that have lots and lots of storage disks in them um, yeah. that store information. And then you need to power the cables and the wires that join all these things together. So um, there's a lot of the different um, components. I guess the, the good news is that, um, you know, in terms of progress, the internet and those big companies are really at the forefront of reducing their energy usage, of being renewable, of consolidating from thousands of smaller energy inefficient sites into you know, smaller numbers of huge energy efficient locations so yes internet uses a lot of power but it is also at the forefront of reducing that power usage and being more efficient so um, and that you're using some quite um interesting things something like, like putting putting these things in uh, colder environments colder uh, atmospheres so because it doesn't matter where they are, really, mm. as long as you can get a decent connection to the internet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a seriously yeah. decent connection to the internet. But you know, there's, there's. So there's. We talked a bit about the, the, the kind of the, the infrastructure that sits behind it and that you know runs the internet. But there's, there's lots of different things that run over the top of that, and they have uh, different impacts. So let's take you know, the ways in which we talk to each other, whether that's by email or SMS or tweets or instant messaging, each of those has a different impact. Um, so email, as an example, is it 0 0.3 grams of carbon, if I remember correctly, it's on my head. Um, so every email that's sent need to uses check that. a little bit of carbon. <laughs> we need to just double check that. But um, yeah. Some one of the listeners will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure. I'm sure they, yeah. Um, but so it's not just the email that you send, um, it's all those emails that get sent from mailing lists and the billions of spam emails that get sent a day. So that you know just gives you some insight as to the way these things can grow without you kind of knowing about them. And then there's streaming services, so 
you know, the amount of energy needed oh, to wow, run yes. Netflix or iPlower. Yep. Plower? iPlower. Easy for iPlower. you to say. <laughs> That's a, a farming device, I think. Or, or you know, Disney Plus or HBO or whatever the, the service is. Are, the, that, <laughs> are, are you just naming them all in case we have to well, <laughs> claim other channels do exist? Uh, I think I missed out <laughs> Amazon Prime and Hulu, but there are and there BBC, many, many of them. Yes. Um, and then, you know, as we move forwards, the Internet of Things is growing and, um, you know, all these billions of connected devices, all all using energy. Drawing their little um, bit. Yeah. Yeah. Doing their little bit. But um, I mean, that, that's that's the kind of the why the Internet, which is kind of like the. The, the backbone, the baseline to individual websites and really wants to talk on this podcast about individual websites. Um, and um, it's not just about the energy from that data center. It's all about, also about, you know, user devices. So who's accessing your site? What yeah. sort of device are they accessing it on? How much data is being transferred between your website and the user device and that's quite a variable thing if you've got a website like we do that has an audio podcast on it the amount of data Hi. transferred <laughs> is a lot more than if you've got a purely text-based website so you know it could be said that the green elephant website is not very green compared to a know, plain a wiki, text a wikipedia it. page but it's not um, very inclusive and not very, um, uh, uh, well, it's not very, yeah. uh, not very marketable. Unfortunately, the, very the, I mean, the, that's very appealing. And I, and I suppose just, you know, slightly off on it is that although this is an interesting conversation, is everything, the balance between giving people choice, giving those that are perhaps less advantaged um, uh, the options to be, uh, able yeah. to listen to something instead of read something accessibility, um, absolutely. accessibility that all of those matters are are part of the, the bigger issues that mm. balance is needed you can't sacrifice everything to be green well, well there's a there's an argument yeah. <laughs> uh, can you sacrifice everything to be green um but yeah it's um uh, I think, it's, you know, so, what so what we're, what we're saying is that an individual website could perhaps tune itself not necessarily to be just about marketing just about getting clicks and getting um uh, being high on the index which is what everyone wants to get yeah. at the top of the google you might also want to start thinking about really making sure that it is running as clean and as green yeah. as is possible absolutely i think we'll, we'll come on to some of those points in a minute but i think yeah you know, some of what we said about the streaming and what's on the page and is it accessible that, you know, it really comes down to what, what content are you putting on your website and, you know, every transfer to and from your website to a device has an impact. And so therefore, if you're transferring small things, that's going to have less of an impact than transferring huge downloads or streaming services. Um, but it also says that if you can save things, called caching if you're technical um, if you can save stuff that's a good thing because it's then on the user's local device and yeah. it doesn't have to be transferred we then get into another ethical moral discussion around what you should and shouldn't save and what you should and shouldn't track oh uh, yeah yeah let's, <laughs> let's not discuss that one today <laughs> please don't <no. laughs> um, that's a, 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 a real hornet's nest of um yeah, uh, we're, we're not here yeah. for that particular discussion. Not, we'll leave that to a completely different podcast. Yeah. Not today. No, indeed. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, but some of the questions to ask you, if you're, if you're conscious, you know, if you're conscious of these things, you know, you, you know, deciding whether you need that fancy functionality or fancy widget or that additional bit of content, um, do, do you really? Is it really adding to the user experience and what the user wants or is it just a bit of a you know a fun doodad that you'd quite like to have on your website and you know yeah increases the impact of, of the site um and i think the other thing is that you've got um technical teams in one corner in the blue corner yeah. technical <laughs> team designing the site 
in the red corner, you've got the sales and marketing team. I'm getting really exciting. <laughs> in the green corner, so this is a three-sided boxing ring we've got. In the green corner, you've got the impact yeah. of the website. And again, yeah. come back to that word balance. How do you achieve a good balance between those three potentially conflicting uh, viewpoints uh, around the viewpoints Great. Um, Good grief. viewpoints around what what the website um, perhaps needs to to do and to I, deliver i suppose actually i'm going to i'm going to stretch your triangular boxing ring uh, or wrestling ring depending on your taste to okay. a square and i think going back to your point about what you should and shouldn't do you've got the compliance one in the other corner okay. <laughs> there's some there's some other guy in the corner going you can't put that on there <laughs> or you can't keep it on there. Or you can't do this. Uh, but yeah. that, that's an interesting four, four sided um, argument to be had. And I wonder yeah. if, if there are companies out there actually getting the, all those people around the, the table that, that kind of eco, uh, I we're struggling with this yeah. word eco on you, but that, that yeah, more yeah. environmentally aware um, person talking and how we keep it, legal and safe for the people but, uh, to use how we make it pretty and how we make sure it's functional yeah. and i think that that conflicting um requirements and that difficulty in balance i think you know draws us to why you know having a website back to the you know title of the, the show can a website ever be green it's really difficult and you're always going to have some impact and it's really about how do you reduce that impact and then how do you reduce the energy use and the emissions? And then, you know, when you are using energy, how do you perhaps then look at maybe offsetting? And I guess offsetting is a discussion for another, for another show, but being aware oh, yes. that when you've got a website, it has an impact. And I think, you know, that's, that's the key message. Can a website ever be green in and of itself? It uses energy, it creates emissions. Um, oh, so nothing's as green as as fresh be aware air. Of you, know. It. <laughs> you know, be aware yeah. of what it is, and and take some steps to to make a difference. So, um, I guess I'll 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 go first with a um, with a step. Um, think about who's hosting your site. Um, yes. Are you using a green web host? And there are some organisations that, that specialised in this, and they and it's very easy to tell from their website they'll be talking themselves about renewable energy where they offset their sustainability um, principles and you'll find all this information it's very easy to tell very quickly the kind of the green position of the web host that you're using so you know check who you're using and see if they're sustainable um, yeah and, and uh, that might take a little bit more digging might it i mean the, so, some if if they're not green are we are we basically saying if they're not that green then they won't say they're green um i, or, I think that's or, probably the case if the, the, the companies it, that are are generally shouting about it and using yeah it a, because a it, it is a it is a sale point yeah. And, yeah um but be aware that that's that actually the greenest type of website is no website at all in a theory yeah. <laughs> so as close as you can get to light it does bring into you know the streaming and the, and we the world has revolutionized probably in the last probably since the internet became very accessible to 97 percent of england or uk at, mm. la, at least but yeah, the, yeah. the and the streaming suddenly went all right well don't buy a cd again um <laughs> and so vinyl gets a resurgence um there's a different matter uh, and then you you end up with this this huge huge graphical load coming down the wire okay nominal amount that actually push it down the wire but it's actually that engine at the background that's streaming this stuff unique to you yeah um to to you and you have to have you know 50 meg connection to the internet to get a decent and you can get 3D video, uh, 3D movies through it, which are just bonkers in size. Um, and yeah, we, we just take that for granted and just bang it down. You, I suppose it's, yeah, yeah. it's be nice to say, you know, this this is going to cost you, um, you know, this is going to burn this amount of electricity or this is going to yeah. burn, the, well, emit this I think amount it, of CO2. You know, it, it comes, you know, uh, action, one we say green web host, but another action that everybody should take is to be transparent with your users, whether they're, 
yeah, if you're internal, provider. external about yeah. the impact of, of what you're doing and the impact of your site. Um, and, and keep, just keep gonna, your content small. And Yeah, well, I was just going to run through a list of tips oh, right, cool. on, you know, optimizing your content and making Glad it Glad you know efficient. what you're doing. And, <laughs> You know, there, there, are, there are numbers of things that you can do. And again, listeners, any tips or further suggestions on optimizing yeah, yeah. and greening your website, then, you know, look us up on, on social and, um, and, and tell us what you think. Um, but here's a few to get started with. So firstly, optimize and reduce your images and videos. Can you make them smaller? Can you make them quicker to download? Or perhaps could you use text instead? Sometimes I see, quite often I see, logos and images where the text has been created as an image rather than just using the text. Um, seems a bit silly. Um, it's a bit. And on text, you use standard fonts. Why download font files and you know create additional overheads? So use standard right. fonts. Um, we mentioned this briefly, but use nice clean code. Don't include features and functions that you don't need. I mean, uh, a widely used platform is something like WordPress, where you know people go with a default install, and there's all sorts of stuff in there you don't really need, don't really use. Just just yeah. get rid of it. Just use or, nice or, and clean, stripped back stuff. Yeah, or, or or they they load it with with widgets and features, and you have a you know yeah. today's date is, and then there's all sorts of the what the weather is, and it's nothing relating to yeah. you. Yeah. All of that is a load. Yeah. On the um, side. Next, next tip is to use something called accelerated mobile pages or AMP, and this is something that, that Google are keen on. So, do this, okay. and you'll you'll help your Google rankings because it makes your pages faster, which is what Google likes. But it strips out unnecessary content and makes it easier to serve to mobile. So, look up AMP and do that for your site. Um, and then finally, in terms of a, a quick tip. Use caching. We we talked about storing information, but but use caching so users don't need to download things every time. You know, make sure that it's as easy and as quick for users to come back to your site time after time. Um, so in, in conclusion, I mean, what, so well, jump in, Russell. Well, that 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 has been obviously very focused on if you are the the provider of a website. You know, you the, you're the business making the website, and of course. Uh, there might be some people out there going, I don't, I don't write websites. I don't, all I do is browse them. I, you know, can, can I do anything? Um, well, what can we, in terms of actions is, you know, look out for the greener websites and perhaps promote them. Uh, yeah. you know, it, that, that would be good if you find, we'd love you to promote ours. Of course you can go yeah. to, uh, <laughs> I mean, go, maybe, maybe we could talk, I mean, there's all sorts of things you could do to make your browsing experience um uh locally eco i mean you you could you know for example switch to a browser like links or something which is purely text-based you don't get any streaming or media images at all that'd be very um out there but the experience wouldn't be perhaps um what what some people might uh and is there's the you um what's that um, uh, uh, and, search and site? Use, use something like ecosia who you know for every ecosia, instead of google right. for every search you do you know they they plant trees so there's and um we'll, we'll put links to a couple of those things in the show notes as well as yeah, things yeah. like um you know carbon testers for websites and things like that so that you can you know for those listeners that want to you know dig into this some more they they can follow those links and, and do that but um i think what we're saying really is that you know can a website be green well even though we can't see them hosting a website uses energy and produces emissions um, but they're making some small changes to what you put on your website and how you construct your website can make a, a, a really big difference to um, the impact that it has. The favourite fact of the moment, which was the music video for Deep ah. Despacito. I thought it was an yes. intro, a great fact and kind of so. just to seal, seal the, the conversation off is it, it set an internet record in, in April 2018 it became the first video to hit 5 billion views on YouTube. Indeed. Not and completely convinced why, but let's... let's more energy burn. than 40,000 US homes use in a year. Yeah, so that just demonstrates the impact websites can have. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it uh, you know, you can get some joys. Perhaps you should contail them and, and watching 
some pop videos might um let's uh, let's move on rapidly <laughs> to encouraging people to, to have a look at our, our the the green elephant dot show website which would uh, be good there's um we, we we log all our facts on there so when we find a fact and we're talking about it on a show you'll find it on there so you can use it and quote it retweet it whatever you fancy and of course we are on the green ellie pod um on social. all of the social networks that that uh, are big enough to to care um uh, and we <laughs> love to <laughs> we love to hear from from anybody that wants to say something and and as is the way if you disagree with us okay oh, tell us oh yeah absolutely We're all, we, always we up for a little it. bit of a chat yes yeah indeed well until next time okay we'll see then. you later Bye-bye. Bye. thanks for listening to this edition of green elephant it's been a pleasure to have your company if you've got thoughts or comments on anything you've heard on the show please drop us a line using studio at greenelephant.show we love hearing your views and ideas in the meantime let's carry on the conversation we're on instagram facebook linkedin youtube and twitter as green ellie pod come back soon